Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. In this video, as you can see, my Honda CX500 engine is not sitting where it should be. <laughs> Basically yesterday I decided I was going to drop the engine out and start the cleaning process on it. Now, when I first did this bike, um, as you all know because you've seen my um, series of this bike build, um, I did the frame all powder coated, I got the tank professionally painted along with all the blue and plastics and then it got to the point where it was in a, in a rolling chassis form and I got a bit excited. Now I'd done some mechanical work with the engine and I knew it was basically spot on and I just shoved it back in the frame the way it was <laughs> just so I could get it out on the road. Now there was two parts of me, one part did actually like the patina that was on the engine the way it came out of the, the shed after sitting for so many years. However when I've been riding the bike and so on and so forth and going around the shows, the engine is the one item that I think now lets the whole thing down. And I think once I've actually got this up to a, to a nice standard, um, it'll just set the whole bike off. So what I've done is, I've dropped the whole engine out with all the ancillaries on, so the radiator is still on, the mounts are still on, um, everything's still on, because before I would actually take all this off while it was in the frame, However, I found it a hell of a lot easier to actually dump this and now do it outside the frame. So I'm not worrying about catching any of my paintwork. So that's what today's job's going to be, along with cleaning it all, getting some of this oxidisation out, rubbing it down, spraying it with some carb cleaner to get it all off. And then basically tomorrow I'm going to be setting about painting it. Now the idea is, I've got some VHT paint, and um, I think it's iron, I think the colour's iron. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to prime it, put a layer of colour on it, then lapper it. But I've also got a fourth kind of paint, which is um, wrinkle paint. I've um, never used it before, but I like the look of it. I was debating whether it go to red or black for the heads and some other bits. I think we're going to go, that's going to be wrinkle, all the water system's going to be wrinkle, and I think some of the um, starter motor is going to be wrinkled along with the intakes. Now, I thought to go with red, but then I thought, no, I think red's a bit too garish, so I've, I've actually went with black wrinkle for all these parts. Now, like I say, I've never used wrinkle paint before. I think the whole idea of wrinkle paint, even though there's no explanation on the net that I can find, but just the logical idea in my head, because it wrinkles up, it actually gives more surface area for heat dissipation, and because it's matte, that also helps. So I think that's the reason for wrinkle paint. It's actually just better heat dissipation than normal flat paint. However, that that that's something that it might be true, might not be true, but I think there is some scientific kind of logic there in my head that it does actually help with heat dissipation. Um, I'm going to clean the radiator up as well because that's a bit manky but you don't see too much of the radiator most of it's covered up by the guards so I'm going to I might leave that for the time being. A um, few other little points um, not this exhaust mount but the other exhaust mount the actual powder coat starting to flake off in areas like around here and down there don't know why it is, it's just literally odd parts. Uh, the rest of the powder coat seems fine. I've tried to uh, scrape it off with my finger and it won't come off, so I'm going to have to touch up those parts just so I don't get any um, water in there and rust starts setting in and starts peeling the rest of the powder coat off. So I'm going to have to deal with that as well. Um, I think other than that, it's pretty much all that indicator is broken. Um, I hit it with my arse, so that needs to do. And I'm going to get some smaller ones because this is the second lot of indicators I've had on the back here. But because my MT goes here, when I go out the shed, I'm on this side and I go and boop and knock it with my arse. So I try and super glue, but it never works. So I'm going to get some very diddy indicators there so my arse won't hit them as much. Hopefully it'll work. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stripping that engine. I've got my GoPro sitting on the door there, so I'm going to do a time-lapse video. And um, we'll then try and get outside and do a bit of um, wire brushing and sand. Right, so I'm back and I've got a few few items to help me in my um, engine painting um, adventure. Um, first one, I've got some duct tape there just to put on all... I've lost the wire brush. Anyway, duct tape to put on um, any of the open ports going into the engine, so where the starter motor was, there, there, which is the um, water um, flow tubes for the coolant and any other bits that need it, because this will actually prevent water getting in. I've got some masking tape in the house, which will actually, no, I've got it there. 
So I've got mask and tape there to mask off the heads and anywhere which I don't want painting at the moment. Um, I've then got a selection of wire brushes and I've also got one down there which fell down just before which I'll grab in a second. So what the idea is, the first step is basically just roughing up the surface and getting any of the oxidisation off and any of the really really tatty bits so any rust or bad oxidisation will take off with the brushes. Once we've done that we shall go over it with some wet and dry then once we've done that we'll go over it with some gunk and then basically wash it off and then maybe after we've gunked it go over again with a wire brush and then for the final step we'll go over with some carb cleaner just to make sure we don't have any grease or dirt on the engine um, before we start painting because we want the best surface we can. I've also got some wet and dry over there just to rough up the surface once we've gone over with the brushes just to make sure we have got a decent key for the paint. I do have an engine kind of jack outside or a bike jack which I'm lending off um, somebody who lives around here who's kindly give it to me to kind of borrow over the week um, so I can actually get to the underside of the engine because I don't like the idea of leaving the underside unpainted or unclean so we're going to do a full job on that so without further ado I shall crack on with the smaller brushes then get the bigger brushes up and um, well the first job is actually to mask off the ports so I'll do that now I'll show you a little trick how to get these also nicely um, fitting onto your port so instead of just trying to mask it off and kind of having squares all over to actually get to the same shape as the port um, it works with masking tape I've never done it with um, duct tape before but it should work the same so if you give us two seconds I shall just prep the engine right so just a quick tip how to get your nice um, finishes on when you're masking stuff off um, like this area here as you can see and if you just take a little bit of wet and dry a bit of coarse um, wet and dry and just literally sand like so over the edge like that and as you can see you'll get this white line if you stand long enough that'll just fall off however what I'm doing at the moment in time is where that white line is I'm just going down with a razor blade and it just cuts it off and makes a nice line so that's how I'm getting my nice my nice clean edges so I'm going to do that on these two um, on the ports around the back here and on the on the actual starter hole um, where the starter motor fits into so I'll crack on with that and then once I've done that I shall start um, taking a brush to this engine. 